There are a few ways that you can quickly get into effective technical discussions, and we're going to go over four of those techniques. The first one is GitHub and Markdown. Uh, so we'll go through here and mark this off. And what I'm going to cover is how to use GitHub and Markdown to create uh, an effective, repeatable technical discussion. So first up here, if you're not familiar with GitHub, it's a place to create source control code and also share the code with other people. So it has a lot of collaboration features. So I'm going to go through here and create a new repo. And a repo is where you would store your work. So we'll go here and say technical discussion. And it's always a good idea to put a description. So this is a demo repo for sharing uh, ideas around communication. And I would recommend adding a readme file so that we can actually do markdown based documentation. And then I'm going to add a git ignore file here for Python. So I'll go ahead and type Python here. And what this does is it makes it so that I don't check in garbage files that, you know, like a .pyc file or some other file that will add noise to my repo. Once I do this, I'm ready to do my first bit of technical discussion. And to do that, I can actually select this pencil icon here and put some documentation in. And I would say something like this. I would go through and add these markdown based tags and you can see how the markdown language works. It's fairly intuitive. If I go and I put in two, it'll be a smaller heading. So this is a second heading. And then if I wanted to do, let's say a bulleted list, I could put a, an asterisk here and say one, make another one and do two, and then do another one and do three. And I can preview those changes on the fly. And so this is a great way to build out technical repeatable discussions because not only do I give people the, the preview here and they can see actually the markdown inside my repo, but I could use this raw markdown and put it into another source like a book or a website. There's lots of ways to format markdown code. So it's probably the ideal technical discussion format. So I'm going to go ahead and save this and then move on to step two. So we are able to create a readme file, got some technical discussion. So let's move on to step two here. And step two will be to uh, explore something called a gist. And a gist is a way of sharing a small code snippet. And uh, I'm going to go through here and go to gist and it's part of GitHub. And what's nice about it is I can put in a very small piece of code. Let's say, for example, hello.py and then write it up into Python. So say, you know, def hello, and then I could say return, you know, X plus Y or, you know, whatever it is that I wanted to, to put inside of here. There we go. And then uh, create this either public gist or, or, a, or a secret gist. In this case, a public one is just fine. And what happens is that it automatically figures out the syntax highlighting. And what's nice about this is if I go through here and I uh, take this particular code sample, I can either embed it or I can share it or I can have, actually have people clone it as well. So if I go ahead and say share, I can take this URL and then I could go back to my technical discussion and I could put, uh, let's say this is my gist, you know, let's say uh, a gist example. This is a good example of my code. And what's nice about this is that it's a isolated piece of code that I can share with other people. And many uh, communication tools like, for example, Slack will, will auto render out what's in this gist. So if you are going to share code with somebody, it's a lot better to use something like a gist because then they get the exact syntax highlighting, they get the exact format, and you don't have to worry about introducing weird characters that could cause problems. So this is a reproducible code sample, plus people can comment on your code as well. So that's uh, the next section. Let's go into Colab and Jupyter. Let's dive into this one next. And what's great about Colab and Jupyter is that it's really easy to create very complex uh, and re reproducible code. So uh, you can take a look here at Colab. It's a hosted version of Jupyter Notebook that's available from Google. And when you, if, if you want to create a new notebook, you can just say new notebook here, and it's actually free. 
Um, anybody can sign up using the Google uh, tools and I could go through here and, and put some documentation together. So I'll say, you know, technical docs. And what's nice about this is that I can run code. So I can just go through here and say, you know, hello and, and put in a function, you know, return hi, something like this, and then ru run that cell like this, right? So it's a great way to actually uh, put exact pieces of code into a notebook and I can build very complex things here. And additionally, I can also get access to a GPU. So if I wanted to go here and say change runtime, I could pick a GPU or a specialized chip like a TPU. So there's some really cool features that are available in the hosted version of Jupyter called Colab. Now to build out a more complex example here for documentation, what I would say is to do something like this. Let's say I was gonna build a data science project. I typically like to do this, I'll do, you know, a couple hashtags here and say ingest. Uh, and then that will be my first part of my project. And then maybe build another uh, example here and say, you know, EDA for exploratory data analysis, and then build maybe a couple more here and say, for example, um, this would be the modeling phase. And then maybe make another cell that says uh, the conclusion. Uh, so the, the, the core idea here is that I can actually build out these examples that are collapsible, you know, build out some code, write whatever it is I want to write here, even put pictures and other items inside of here. And it uses Markdown as well. So if I'm using uh, the techniques that I, that I covered earlier, you know, in, in the uh, GitHub readme, I could do the same techniques here. I could say, you know, this is a Markdown, you know, heading, and then I could go through here and put like one, you know, two, etc. So it's got a lot of powerful features that are embedded inside of this. Uh, now it gets even better because if I wanted to share it with someone, I could click on this icon here and just create a link and then share it with anybody, right? I could do like a, you know, you treat it as a Google Doc or the, the feature that we're going to use is I'm going to go and I'm going to say file and I'm going to save this inside of GitHub itself. And so what's nice about this is that it will call connect automatically to my GitHub account. I can authenticate against it and then check this into my repo. So I'm gonna go through here and say, you know, find this uh, documentation uh, that I just created called technical docs. Here we go, technical discussion. And I'll go ahead and say, okay, this will do a commit. And then now it's actually available inside of my uh, GitHub repo. And what's great about this is that not only can people look at the code and, and, and reproduce exactly because they can see it, if they click on this link, it'll open up their own version of it as well. So this is probably one of the most effective ways to do a technical discussion is to create a collab notebook and check it into GitHub. Likewise, if I want to go through here and I want to put a reference to it, I could just say, you know, um, right here, I could say, you know, collab example, right? And now I've got this in and say this is the notebook and notice how when I put this link in I use this um, markdown formatting to to reference links right so it's just the square brackets and then the link itself is with the 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 uh, parentheses okay great I got this cooking so the last step here that I'm going to show you is a neat little trick where we can embed images in markdown it works with Colab Notebook Markdown, or it also works with uh, Jupyter uh, Markdown, or it also works with GitHub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my repo, which is here, technical discussion, and I'm gonna go to issues in GitHub, and I'll say new issue. And what this will do will allow me to create this ticket. And what's neat about creating a ticket is that I can later put an image inside of here. So let's say I want to, I don't know, take this um, notebook and I wanted to take a picture of it. I can use the a screenshot here and just grab a little piece of this and this will show up on my desktop. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll drag that icon of the image directly into this location. So if I go here and what it does is it actually creates a uh, URL for me. And if I say, submit this issue, notice that now appears inside of a GitHub 
issue. To reference this in my technical documentation now, uh, I go here and edit the readme file and then put in an image. And this is a neat little trick that uh, is a great way to host images in your notebook. And notice when we put this in, you'll see that I have an image that appears as well. So we've covered several different forms of technical communication uh, in this brief overview, including how to use GitHub, how to use GIS, how to use Collab Notebooks, and then how to uh, paste images. So all of these are effective ways to create reproducible technical communication.